Anti-SAP missile has been launched, President Putin. We will show these Western dogs what Russia can do. Excellent work, Sergei. As soon as the satellite is destroyed, they will realize that we could bring down the world economy. There will be no more trouble with all of these sanctions and the rest of this. Well said, President Putin. Very uh, eloquent. 25 seconds to impact. Soon, the Western world will need to contend with over 1,500 pieces of space junk. 1,500? You said 15! 15! Uh, no, no, President Putin. 1,500. I mean, we're destroying a whole satellite here. I mean, you would have to be a complete idiot to think that that would create only... Uh... Abort the mission! Use the flight termination charges! Uh, as you may recall, President Putin, we regard flight termination charges as failure. Terminating a flight is failure, so uh, we, we have no flight termination charge. You stupid well, President Putin, uh, in light of my recent failure, I have only four things to say. What is that? Chitira. Three. Dva. Adin. Sergey, you incompetent mother Now I'm going to have to come up with some sort of cover story that no reasonable person is ever going to believe. And I'll tell you something else. As soon as I get back from the UN, it's for you, ass. <laughs> National Aeronautics and Space Administration, Joe speaking. Uh, Joe, this is Sergey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, Sergey! Nothing that we've done, all put together, can measure up to what you guys just up. Let me tell you something. Uh, I need to sleep on your couch. The humor is done, and possibly for good on this channel, depending on how things go with this recent development. As almost all of you have probably heard, the Russians launched a direct ascent anti-sat weapon towards their defunct satellite Cosmos 1408. The satellite was launched way back in 1982 and had a polar orbit, and the consequences have been nothing short of cataclysmic. This animation, by the way, was donated by Hugh Lewis, a YouTuber that has maybe 24 subscribers. Follow the link in the description and give him some appreciation because he does some very unique and interesting stuff. But this particular animation demonstrates where the cloud of debris has been created as a consequence of this test. And the cloud is immense. We're talking 1,500 tracks objects and probably hundreds of thousands of smaller particles. So as you can see, the orbit of this cloud of particles is naturally polar because the satellite itself was polar and it is in low Earth orbit, which was crowded to begin with. The problems that we have with space junk have been compounded now to an unbelievable extent. The ISS is in danger. Anything that we launch in the future is in danger, and the odds of something known as the Kessler Syndrome that I have spoken about many times on this channel have just become far more likely. And I am not engaging in any sort of crazy speculation here or any sort of alarmist talk. 
This sort of event is something where we are rolling the dice with the future of our civilization. We're talking about the internet, GPS, aircraft ability to navigate, all sorts of things that would be brought down and really bring our economy and indeed our civilization to its knees has just been made far more likely by this event. The potential damage that can be created by space debris simply cannot be overstated. For example, a one centimeter paint fleck traveling at 10 kilometers per second, which is a typical orbital speed, can cause the same damage as a 550 pound object traveling 60 miles an hour on Earth. If you increase the size of the debris to 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters, such a projectile would have the explosive force of and seven kilograms of TNT. I mean, it is beyond comprehension what these kinds of speeds can do to the impact of some sort of collision, no matter how small the object may be. And we have not only 1,500 trackable objects, but tens of thousands of other objects that we can't track that have just been created in a polar orbit that threatens not only the ISS, but many other other satellites as well. And the Kessler syndrome, as many of you know, involves a scenario where a cascading effect is created by a single satellite being destroyed by such a cloud of debris, that satellite in turn creating more space trash, that space trash in turn destroying more satellites, which creates more space trash. If the ISS were destroyed, for example, can you imagine the amount of space debris that would be created by that kind kind of cataclysm, and this particular event has put the ISS at risk, and it continues to put the ISS at risk every 90 minutes, every time that the debris that was once Cosmos 1408 travels along its polar orbit and crosses over the ISS's orbit, which happens to be at roughly the same altitude, this becomes a crisis situation. The ISS is going to need to ascend to a different orbit, and yet even that does not guarantee its safety because this cloud of debris will continue to expand to encompass a variety of orbits and its polar nature will threaten all sorts of satellites in different orbits as time goes on. This has now become a crisis situation that cannot be overlooked. There can no longer be any delays in this matter. Action needs to be taken. But why the hell? Did this happen in the first place? The words most news media agencies are using right now are irresponsible or incompetent or something along those lines, but an action like this could not have been undertaken without the authority of President Vladimir Putin. And in my opinion, this was completely calculated because I'm not a big believer in coincidences. And currently the Western world is in a state of crisis with the Russian Federation over the Ukraine and other issues in Europe. Right now, NATO has actually threatened recently the Russian Federation and told them not to continue interfering and imposing their will on the nation of Ukraine. And then mysteriously, this event happens. Now, of course, an event like this would also damage Russia's ability to operate, but Putin may be operating under the assumption that Russia could handle the destruction of our low Earth orbit satellite network, whereas the Western world would be far more tragically impacted by just such an event. And that is actually quite true. Russia went through an economic freefall just a couple of decades ago, whereas the Western world has not experienced anything that bad in quite some time. Russia could deal with a cataclysm of this nature, whereas other nations might not. At least, that's the sort of thinking that I think may be in play here. And if that is indeed the case, Russia is playing a very, very dangerous game. 
So what do we do about this? Well, first and foremost, cleanup efforts needs to start immediately. We can no longer be toying around with this and underfunding the whole notion of cleaning up space debris. We no longer have that luxury. The most promising and currently operational space cleanup satellite is called the ELSA-D. It only weighs 175 kilograms and it is currently completed its first test where it had a small client satellite of about 17 kilograms which it captured with a ferrous magnetic plate. Now this is the sort of thing that would be able to capture most kinds of space debris since most space debris is made out of metal and is therefore magnetic. The LCD is also operational, at least its first prototype is. It also only weighs 175 kilograms and can remove multiple pieces of space Space junk. It can attack tumbling pieces of space debris as you're seeing here. I covered a lot of this in a recent video, but nevertheless I think it's worth covering it again, especially since that video was not tremendously popular at the time. Now interestingly enough, 10 different companies recently forged an alliance dedicated to removing debris from low Earth orbit. This included companies like Ariane Spas and Astroscale and also a Chinese Earth observation operator called CGSTL, the French space agency CNES, European satellite tracking group EUSST, Dutch research and teaching institution IIASL, and French space aware, uh, situational awareness startups or SSA. Now it's very admirable that these organizations have gotten together, but it's not enough. We need some very big companies to get engaged at this point. Blue Origin, SpaceX, and NASA for that matter, all of these organizations need to get committed to cleaning up low Earth orbit as this astroscale satellite is able to do, even on pieces of space junk that it loses track of, by the way. It has visual sensors to track down pieces of space junk on its own independently. It's a remarkable piece of equipment that, as I said, is currently operational, and now it needs to be funded, it needs to be mass produced, and it needs to be launched. And since it only weighs 175 kilograms, you can send a hell of a lot of these up on just one Falcon 9. Now, given the amount of space debris that we're talking about, this problem may seem overwhelming to us and unsolvable at this point, but it really isn't. If you remove 50 pieces of strategic space junk, that is high risk stuff, that removes the possibility of one collision. You don't need to remove thousands of pieces of space debris to significantly improve the problem. And as I've been saying, Astroscale seems like the best solution. The Clear Space One, which by the way is also being supported by the ESA, the British Space Agency, the Europeans seem the most focused about this along with the Japanese. This is a solution that is frankly too far away on the horizon to be practical. We need something that is operational now, something that can be produced now, and something that can start removing space debris now, and Astroscale seems to be the closest to accomplishing this. But in the meantime, anything else that creates unnecessary debris has to stop. And unfortunately, it may already be too late. But if it isn't, then this is what needs to happen, plain and simple. And let me put it this way, what do you think the world would do if 1,500 missiles were being launched at random across the planet with no regard whatsoever for air traffic, and these were missiles, by the way, that would leave the atmosphere and then come back through the atmosphere every 90 minutes with the possibility of hitting a commercial flight in that time frame every time they made a pass. Oh, and by the way, these missiles would continue their trajectory forever until they hit something or they eventually burned up in a few years. Do you think any sane nation or organization would approve of something like that being done? Of course not. Such a thing would be completely insane. And yet what has just happened recently is precisely the same thing. 
1,500 unguided missiles being sent hurtling through low Earth orbit with no regard whatsoever for other traffic. And if you think it's less relevant than the possibility of destroying commercial airline flights, you are mistaken because the destruction of our low Earth orbit network would be just as cataclysmic, perhaps even more so, given the fact that the internet, GPS, and so many other vital systems depend on it. So even though Putin and the Russian Federation has predictably gone into denial mode on this whole thing and simply saying that they never did it and the West is lying, etc, etc, well, who gives a damn? I certainly don't. This needs to stop. There needs to be a treaty signed in 2022 at the latest to ban the use of the these types of weapons in the future. Russia must be brought to the table to sign sign this agreement regardless of what they happen to be denying. And any nation that launches such a weapon in the future, I hate to talk this way because I'm really not a warmonger, but if any nation violates this treaty, a state of war must exist between them and whoever is enforcing the treaty, such as NATO and other organizations. I am not a big fan of this sort of thing at all, and I am terrified of nuclear war war, but I am equally terrified of the possibility of our low Earth orbit network being taken out and what that would do to our civilization and our economy. It would be nothing short of disastrous. And what really disturbs me is the fact that the news media would have us believe that this particular incident really only threatens the ISS, our astronauts, and our future ambitions in space. It is way, way more serious than that, and I have my doubts as to whether or not the mainstream media truly understands things like the Kessler Syndrome and what this could represent for the future of our civilization. At the very least, though, it's going to be some some long nights at NASA as they track this new cloud of threatening space debris and tries to keep the ISS clear of it. Because if the ISS is indeed destroyed by space debris in the near future, as we saw just a few years ago in a very famous movie, well, the consequences would be nothing short of game over in low Earth orbit for quite some time. That much space debris would no doubt annihilate almost everything we have in low Earth orbit, leaving only our geosynchronous satellite network in place. The consequences for the planet and our civilization would be too awful to think about. So here are the three things that we must do. Number one, hope to hell that it isn't already too late. Number two, get a treaty signed immediately to make sure that something like this never happens again. Number three, refocus our space efforts on cleaning up low Earth orbit, regardless of what that may cost. The technology and the satellites already exist to start this process. And now, effort, money, and investment needs to be refocused on this effort, because without our network in low Earth orbit, all of these major corporations and all of these wealthy governments are going to be put into a state of free fall. Their citizens are going to endure consequences that really no one would have anticipated. Very few people are talking this way because very few people understand just how important our low Earth orbit satellite network is to our civilization but it is that important, it is that critical, and we must do something about it as quickly as possible. Hopefully, that's something that will happen sooner rather than later. So until the world wakes the hell up and recognizes what has just happened and what sort of crisis situation this has created and how urgent it is that we take immediate action to clean up low Earth orbit and to prevent any further events like this from happening in the future. Until we recognize that space is just as important as what happens here on Earth and without our network in space, we are doomed. I urge all of you to stay angry about space.